Yeah, so. Well, what was I saying? About Zoom. Here. About Zoom. Yeah. What about Zoom? <laughs> I got that much rich. You're going to have to finish. Well, I was just listening to a little bit of what they were saying earlier in this last Wednesday meeting, um, and we talked about it too during one message, but the difference between, you know, resolutions, you know, yeah. and it really, we're living in a revolution, a yes. new day, not resolutions, and resolutions, you know, really is about the old way, the old man of still focused on yourself right. you know uh, you know living by that uh, determination self-determination and willpower and yeah. promise yeah. right yeah. about pr making promises even to God you know so we make ourselves the the promise keeper and really and I mean there's whole movements called promise keeper movements that, yeah. and I've been to their rallies of thousands of men in Atlanta years ago you know this was in the 90s when it was really huge i don't even know what it's doing now but it was all about really living by resolutions sure yeah. and a promising us being the a promise keeper of doing better being a better husband being a better father but the focus was all on on me and and actually living for god mm -hmm. you know better you know um praying you know vowing to pray more, to read our Bible more, to do better. Yeah. And it all sounds so right to the, to the, to the flesh, mind. to the carnal <laughs> mind. But it's like I think Greg said, he says, and, we, and they were talking about, too, and this is the reason I turned it on towards the end, I think they were talking about Lordship Salvation. I heard that, yeah. And he says it's from the pit of hell. Yeah, I heard him say. What do they call Lordship Salvation? Well, Lordship is Salvation is, well, you've made Jesus Savior, but have you made him yeah, Lord? Oh, okay. In other words, implying what are you, do Jesus died for you, what are you doing for him? Yeah. Right. Are you a fan of Jesus or a follower, a true follower? Oh, back to that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a big book out yeah. of not being a fan. That was huge. Right. Really? And it's, I mean, it's, it's like the number one yeah. sellers. Yeah, it was yeah. a big seller. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, How they're. How do you make Jesus Lord? Right. How do you make <laughs> Jesus? Jesus is Lord. <laughs> you don't make him Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all based of, it's, to me, it, it goes back to that man. It, it's Galatians talks about you began in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? And I was looking at Galatians 1 and you know, the couple ch uh, chapters there. And it's such a subtle, he says, who has bewitched you? You know, it's, there's such a subtleness. And when you talk about Lordship Salvation, you think, well, it sounds right, sounds good. And a lot of people, I mean, churches are filled with thinking that, yes, it's really not about, it's really about my promises. I'm the promise keeper. I'm the one that God is looking to for uh, to even to even serve him, okay, yeah. and do things for him so that he will be happy. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that he will be pleased with me. Exactly. And that sounds so in, in you know, like you said to the car it's mind, it sounds so right, but it really is from the learned. pit of hell. <laughs> You know, if it's what, it's what we've learned uh, even as children by our earthly parents, if we do the right thing, they're happy with us. That's right. right. So we feel good about ourselves because whatever we do that makes us feel good yeah. uh, is what's, yeah. you know. The flesh needs to do something. Well, that goes back to, ties in to what James was talking about, really. Yeah was the wisdom that you're following is not the wisdom of, of the, the wisdom Lord. It's the, the wisdom from beneath. It's so the beneath. wisdom of the world that, that we're raised up with. Devilish, right? she calls it. <laughs> Earthly, sensual, and devilish. devilish. Yeah. People forget that it's a work of God. <laughs> it's God's work. Yeah. It's not man's work. Right. See, Paul, Paul emphasizes the cross 
The cross means your dad. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think a lot of people, you know, that see Jesus as their Savior, to me, they've come to the cross. But I think there's a going through the cross to the new life. That's, right. See, you leave all of your baggage at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's you don't good. take it on through. Yeah. Greg had a message I just listened to the other night. He was talking about meeting, meeting God at the cross. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's the power of God onto salvation. Because that's where hmm. life begins, at the cross, right? That's where, yeah, that's where yours ends. And his, <laughs> his <laughs> begins. begins. Yeah. I am crucified with yeah. Christ. I am. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live. Well, that goes back to what, what Rick was talking about, about the new creation, step, with the resolution, right? Right. Yeah. We're, we're a new creation instead of, a, we're not the old man anymore. Right. We're a new being, and we should start living out of that instead mm -hmm. of out of the old man. I've heard it said this way. It's, this is not a transaction we make with God. It's a transformation <laughs> That's actually that God does in and through us. Let's make a deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do this. I heard it. I yeah. was watching, Making deals with God. I was watching the fellow Angelus a couple days ago up at our condo. And this guy's been on for like probably 30 years. Uh, but he had a mentor that said that all the blessings of God are uh, conditional. Uh, uh, and they're, they're for those, they those, yes who will, those who will work for them will have them. Mm -hmm. Right. That's from hell. That, yeah. yeah. But this yeah. guy's been on and he's got a big church and he's been preaching oh, yeah. that kind of thing for years. Well, some of the biggest churches are preaching that kind of message. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's totally wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the blessings of God are all, you know, are in Christ. All the promises are in Him. Yes, and all of them are yea and amen. All, all good things are from the Father above. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, like you had mentioned a couple of times, the veil was rent from the top to the bottom. It wasn't <laughs> rent from the bottom to the top. Right. <laughs> Okay. Right. So it's God's work. We are God's, God's work. Workmanship. That's right. Yeah. If the cross is effectual in our lives, in other words, if we're going through it instead of just to it, just to be this, our Savior, the life of Christ is to be manifested in ours, yeah. our life every yeah. day. That's what. My Paul's testimony was such a wonderful one. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can become religious. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or you yeah. can be religious. You, you either have life or you have Christianity. I don't know. So, yeah. Well, a lot of the Christian life is about um, me trying my best to live for Christ. Yeah. Instead of Christ life in me. Yeah. Well, it's really hard. It, it's really hard for us not to be in, in control of something and to let go. To just it is, let it go. It is. And yeah. that's some of what they were talking about on here is instead of making resolutions, and you can if you want to do this differently or that, but don't expect life to be a result of it. Right. Or the life yeah. of Christ to be a result. You know, um, Paul said, all things are lawful to me, but yeah. all things aren't expedient. That's right, so right, right. Beneficial. We do what we do, but we do it knowing that we live and breathe and move in him, and mm -hmm. he is our life. It's, yeah. you guys, it's stressful. It's having a heart persuaded to a, a different kind of life, that life that comes from God. Yeah. Which is the only life, really, because everything else, Brother, apart what, from God, is really not that's life. That's what makes you free. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, well, he wants free. us to really experience and enjoy this, this life, to be because filled with this for life. For one thing, yeah. that life before the cross, or one where the cross isn't effectual, is under condemnation. Mm -hmm. Not that God's necessarily condemning us. No. But... We our own will, heart condemns us, right? Our own heart condemns us. Yeah. But he's greater than our heart. Yeah. <laughs>
Which shows the, the very heart of God. Yes, it does. For it? us, even yeah. when we, uh, uh, if someone would fall into a different persuasion that it's not of him, right. he doesn't abandon people. His heart is still after them. He knows that they're believing in a way that that they're, that is causing them to, to oppose themselves. They're being opposed right. to themselves, yeah. you know, contrary to their selves. Yeah. You know, and we, this thing about persuasion faith, it's, it's a matter of what spirit is persuading you. Mm -hmm. What spirit are you being persuaded by? Um, and I, th I think you guys all believe the same way I do that I wasn't saved by my faith. Right. No. You know, I, the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. I think the I think the life was a gift. I don't necessarily see the gospel as just an offer. Uh, it I was gifted with it, right? Mm -hmm. Not because of any righteousness that I have done. Yeah. No. But <laughs> well, life pretty much me. teaches us teaches us. Uh, <clears throat> Very quickly, that in a lot of situations, there's nothing much we can do. <laughs> you know, we, we find out our, our shortcomings real quick, yeah. right? In life, yeah. especially well, I, when it comes to, to anything spiritual. I love how Bertie actually put it to me this when he was around here going on his ministry trip about bringing out that, you know, we're dust. <laughs> that uh, what can dust do? Now, when you bring it to me, it, it just makes it simple. Okay. Yeah. If if uh, if you know that you, you're you've been formed from the dust, what can dust do to serve it with self and life? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> really. See, it takes the breath of God to make that life even live. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like in the beginning. Exactly. Um, but you know, I don't think we realize either that. The Lord, talking about the cross again, I see that I see the Lord lived a crucified life before he ever was nailed to the tree. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. crucified out of the world in yeah. his flesh as being his source. Yeah. I can do nothing except I see what the Father I do. Mm -hmm. I can of myself do yeah. nothing. Okay. Now you're receiving whatever you're receiving from God. It's not about right. you. Yeah. Um, as the son of man, that's how he lived. Mm -hmm. So when he said things like in John three thirteen, um, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, right. even the son of man which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, he's talking about himself, and he's he's standing right here. Mm -hmm. son of man, son of he God. has ascended. He has, he has mm -hmm. lived an ascended life as a man. Yeah. Yes. Crucified to sin, the world, right. the devil. The, yeah. That's what made him the perfect offer, right. perfect sacrifice. Yeah. When people, uh, a lot of times when you hear that Jesus lived a crucified life, they're thinking, hmm, that sounds awful hard and miserable. Hmm. But he, like you said, it was a joyous life because he was crucified to the ways of the world that brought death and misery. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And, and, and he looked beyond this to the glory that would be as a result of that life Yeah. that he would lay down. I mean, he started laying that down as a man, as the son of man. Mm -hmm. Okay. But people think, well, i gotta, I got to give everything up. Well, what are you going to give up? What are you giving up? Death. <laughs> You're going to gain everything. Yeah. Actually. So, yeah. I always think when I we were talking about the dust, this the Lord drew my attention to Isaiah 40. Mm -hmm. And verse 1, he says, um, Isaiah 41, verse 1, he said, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Then he says, speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yeah. And that's double grace, grace, grace. Yes, right? Yes. And then it says this, 
This sounds familiar. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Yeah, John Okay, prepare the way of the Lord. Make, his, uh, make straight in the yes. desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain shall and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And then he says this, okay. The voice said, cry out. What shall I cry again? And he says, what shall I cry? And he says, this is what you cry. All flesh is grass, and all loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever yeah <laughs> so powerful you know, i like that where it's talking about comfort and yeah you know the holy spirit is the comforter and uh make straight the paths for the lord mm -hmm. so to me that's saying the holy spirit is preparing our heart to receive the lord mm -hmm. the holy mm -hmm. spirit is ministering to our heart so when we hear the word of the lord we're ready to receive it because he's comforting us mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, John came saying as well, every tree that doesn't bear fruit will be, the ax is laid to the root. And that's all speaking of flesh and the, the tree really that is being spoken of as a tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the sense of mm -hmm. us, the fruit that's come from that yeah. right. is not the fruit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, any righteousness that's not, well, like, like it said, that he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. Anything other than that righteousness is really unrighteousness. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, the gospel's really simple. Yeah. Um, like the analogy of a tree. Any time a branch is removed from its host tree, mm -hmm. it looks alive for a while. This is yeah. the flesh fading here. But it's dying. Eventually it gets obvious that it's dying. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's not grafted into the tree anymore. It's not being fed. Right. So when we, when we uh, were, the serpent was effective in getting us to eat from the wrong tree, uh, uh, you know, we tried to establish our righteousness apart from God and lived forever apart from God. That was a lie that Serpent said that you could do that, but yeah. you can't. <laughs> Anything impossible. apart from God dies. Right, exactly. See, this is all about becoming one with God and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. And That's when Paul says things like, uh, the law requires a mediator, but a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. And he's mm -hmm. talking about if you're one with him, you're one, they're all, you're all one. Mm -hmm. There's no law yeah. involved in yeah. what we have in, in Christ, yeah. except for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit. But that's a whole lot different from the law of sin and death. And really that's speaking of the... The union again it speaks union. of union yeah. those that have become uh, joined to the Lord have become one spirit with him mm -hmm. yeah. so there is no separation yeah. and I was thinking about this on a side note that we we're talking about faith mm -hmm. again which is persuasion of God right. it originates from God but it, but the Bible speaks of our faith you know and your faith our faith that uses that and to me I see it He's saying, yeah, God is saying, yeah, it's our faith because you're in, in union with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. no longer his faith and our faith, but it's, it's the same our faith. faith. It's our faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. I well, see that our as ours yeah. in union with God. Well, I think there's just a, a feeling out there with a lot of Christians is the fact that they want to be in union with the Lord, but it's almost they're thinking the union doesn't happen 
the Lord doesn't want to be in union with us until we're better, until we rise up to a, be more pleasing to him. But that's a religious <laughs> God. See, that's a, that's a religious image of God that a lot of people have come to believe that's not God at all. You know, and I did a, I did a little video here and got some a little. You're always going to get a little flack from it, well, sure. but uh, you know it was about God's desire is to serve you. Yes. With His life. Yes. And in Acts 17, He says God is God is all sufficient. He's all Shaddai, Shaddai, yeah. the all sufficient one. All sufficient. He doesn't even need us to worship Him or to serve Him. Yeah. Okay, and it's his his desire to serve us with all that he is, right. and and the word it says the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt yeah. among us and what did the word come to do? The word didn't come to be served, no. but to serve yeah, and to give said. his life. Right. I've come that you might have life. He came to, yeah. and he says uh, he has prepared a table for us. In the presence of our enemies. Yes, yeah. And there's another scripture that it's like one of those isolated scriptures. That I think it's in Matthew. It says, when we come into his kingdom, he will cause us to sit down at his table yeah. and serve us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But see, when you talk about God serving us, that just totally contradicts mm -hmm. many people's image of, of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is just like the God that is up there with the list of things for you to do to serve him to make him happy yeah there's a scripture you know? in or so that you can become righteous you know so it's always it always goes back to to you and what you need to do so how do you please god you let him serve you that's right and you believe what he said that he'll do it <laughs> yeah so i i um i brought this little thing that i read this is um a flyer monthly flyer whatever from Andrew Womack's yeah. ministry. Mm -hmm. And here's an article that is um, not from him, but it's from one of his professors okay. that teaches at Karis College. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also a um, conference speaker at a lot of the conferences. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, I, I just, it ties right in what you, what you guys have been what, saying. What's his name, Joey? This um, is his name Dwayne on? Sheriff. Yeah, I've heard of him. Anyway, so this is about fighting the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. How do you fight the right fight the right way? One little paragraph. When I'm tempted to sin, I have to fight the good fight of faith. I'm not fighting to be made righteous. I'm fighting to maintain my righteousness mm. in Christ. Mm. <laughs> I'm not fighting to get healed I'm fighting to maintain my healing maintain it. that yeah. Jesus paid for well you know the only way you'll be successful is that you have to keep the maintenance your, your program. sword sharp <laughs> file that sword down and keep but it really we sharp we don't have to fight we don't have to fight anyway I know he, well see then it, 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 what, that just it shows you it goes right back to making you the main point of reference yep. yeah. of what you need to do to fight you know and all this but what I see in the scripture is we rest yeah. in all that yeah, God right. says we already are in yeah, Christ wow. I am accepted I am blessed I am holy I am complete yeah. in Christ mm -hmm. yeah. so it's not about me striving and struggling and fighting as it is no. just and believing yeah, again, really the, believing the fight. The fighting is really re resisting the wisdom of the world and accepting the wisdom of exactly. God. <laughs> yeah, it's it's walking in the faith. That's it, and not walking by sight. Because when we walk by sight, we're going to be looking at where we are, how we are, how well we're doing. Uh, that's not it, and that's not maintaining our righteousness either. It's well, you know, that does sound very logical, doesn't it? That little paragraph there. Yeah, sir. From the, to the carnal mind, that sounds pretty logical. You know, I'm just maintaining. I have to maintain yeah. my righteousness. I have to maintain my healing. No. Yeah. And how you maintain it is the cross. Suck it up, buttercup. Because <laughs> the cross says I'm dead. What can I do? What can dust do? Grit. <laughs> so. And you know that word, we talked about this before, which... 
that word evil, you know, is uh, means to toil and labor. That's yeah. what it means. It uh, means to yeah. toil and labor for, for uh, in other words, fight, toil and labor. And it says, an evil eye is filled with darkness. But an, uh, a single eye, which is seeing your union in Christ, mm -hmm. you'll be filled with light. Yeah. That's what he says. If your eye is evil, you're yeah. filled with darkness. But, you know, really, too, uh, rest is a work. I mean, rest, rest is a fruit. Yeah. It's a fruit. But yeah. th there is a work of, of coming into the rest. Yeah, but it's the work of God. Well, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul said. Again, it, to me, when I, when I, now this is what I'm saying. When I think about the faith, I think of the work of God. That's right. The work of God is persuading your heart mm -hmm. to believe. Yeah. That's why he yeah. says, what shall we do that we might do the works of God? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, this is the work of God right. that you believe. Yeah. And that's how I said. I, I used to see that as oh, the only work God requires is for me to somehow try to believe. Try to believe. Okay. <laughs> but now I see it as no, the work of God is persuading your what heart he's doing. to right. believe. He is yeah. working. The Father is the always work working. Of God. The it's work of God. Not the work of Rick. It's not right. the work of Rick. <laughs> it's right. like everything else, it's a gift. And again, in context with what I'm be beginning to see about the faith, and that's where. It's kind of scary in a way. Huge movements with big platforms that don't really understand what the faith is or where yeah, it originates. Yeah, yeah. They're still promoting a faith that it's just like, it's more, it's, it's really a different, it's just another law, a form of legalism. It's a legalistic type of faith, you know, that, that points people to, and it really has put a lot of people under a lot of condemnation and a lot of anger towards God because they say, I believed you, God, and you didn't do this. Yeah. Like, like faith is a meter, you know, and you felt like you, man, you, you pressed that meter as hard as you could and you still didn't receive what you asked for. <laughs> and a lot of the word of faith movement is there. I mean, this fellow I'm talking about the other day about blessings of God are conditional and you have to, whoever's willing to work for them will, Get them. Mm -hmm. uh, Roll up your you sleeves. Well, his whole thing was speaking the word, speaking in tongues, reading your Bible every day. You know, it's always a, it's it's Work what it you're doing and how Did much you're do doing that? of it, rather than a life you just live out. Like we were talking about, you know. Should I buy this new car? Should I do this? Should, Should I, I buy this that? can of beans? And you know what? I swear, I, one time I had to buy a refrigerator. Okay? I, I, me and my wife had a, bought a used one in, in, in Florida. I lived in Florida for 18 years, by the way. Oh. Okay. And um, lightning hit. Took that out about three times, and I finally said, <laughs> we, we, "Then we talked you about buying." You got this. Talked about buying a new one. Where you move? Yeah. Three times. Well, I think I better move down there, down there. Believe me, in Orlando. At least next door. Yeah. So we looked at a side by side back then. They were the big deal. Uh, it was like twelve hundred dollars, you know. And I'm out walking like I did every day. And I, that was my time with the Lord. I said, Lord. You know, praying about should I buy another used one, Lord, or should I buy a new, buy the new one? Should I? You know, he said to me, and you know, not audibly, but yeah, the way the Lord's ever spoke to me is I just know that wasn't me. It was I heard something. <laughs> I didn't hear a voice, but I knew what was said. Buy whichever one you want. <laughs> no, really? For, I mean, and it did get paid for. But we kind of. That sounds so irreverent. I'm just kidding. I know, but that's what they're talking about the Lordship thing, where you right. have to go to the Lord for everything, mm -hmm. pray about everything. Right. Well, I think there's a lot we don't understand about those kind of things Paul said, like pray without ceasing, pray about everything. So, I think it's communion with the Lord. I think it's yeah, just, that's, that's I just think it's communication. Well, if you did communion. that, if you, 
that lordship thing, you'd be back to what Paul's talking about in Galatians. You'd be back under a tutor that's telling you everything what to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. want to tell us exactly what to do. That's not his nature. Yeah. No, but somebody, I don't know if it's you or Phelan or one of them, one of you guys said, uh, whatever you do, as long as you do it in love or you do it for the right reasons and not some obvious wrong reason, uh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it reminds me of Malcolm in his earlier days, um, he was praying about going to some foreign country for on a mission trip or something and he prayed long and hard and long and hard. I would too. And at the, at the end of it, it was like when he asked him one more time, you know, Lord, what should I do? You know, should I go? Should I go should to I this go? wherever it was, Africa, whatever? Should I go? And it was just like what you just said, how God spoke to you. It's the same thing. Right. It was like he said that God told him, he said, if you want to. <laughs> that was After it. all that struggle. After all that, yeah. yeah. And if you want to. And at the same time, if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. Not that you get a desire for a Cadillac or this or that, but the desires, the things you want to do, obviously in the right spirit. Uh, well, it's ooh. like our move to here. It wasn't like... Uh, and this is, this is I, I, I tell people a lot of times I pray more for closed doors than open doors. Really? Because I'm usually going going in. And I said, Lord, if this isn't you, That's close good. the door. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry. You know? Because I'm on my way. Because I'm going. I'm going in. Stop me if I'm not I'm going in. to be doing this. You know? It's yeah. just like, you know. But it, to me, it's just, uh, it's relationship with the Lord. And um, God's not religious. God's no. not, um, he doesn't have a Bible on his bedside, you know? No. He's not religious. He's, you know, intimate. He's he's into relationship, to walking with us. And uh, I don't, when I, you know, get up in the morning, uh, I don't, uh, you know, get on my knees and ask God, what should you, what should, what do you want me to do? Yeah. It's not, I don't approach God like that, you know. It's just, we just hang out. I get a cup of coffee and we hang yeah. out. Right. And the Lord serves me with words of life. Yeah. yeah. And I respond to those words. And that's that, that whole thing. He, he knows that I delight to hear his voice and to respond to his word because his words are life. And God, I'm finding out God loves that. You know, he loves that. And he just, that's what we're created for. You know? Yeah, I've said it for a while that the devil really doesn't care how religious we get. Just as long as we don't come to know how we really are in the Lord, He would encourage us to keep on the hands the treadmill, yeah. and doing whatever. As long as it keeps us occupied, where we don't <laughs> really come to know who we are and how we are in the Lord. Yep. He, Jesus didn't say He come to make us religious. He said that we came that we might have life and that yeah, more right. abundantly. That's right. It's a relationship with our Father. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not the Lord is the only one that had that. He was the only one that had that when he came. Mm -hmm. right? You understand, the Lord was a root out of a dry ground. Mm -hmm. It was a desert, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. There was no real vegetation, no real life uh, it, but him. Right. He talked of himself as a green tree among dry trees. If right. they do this in a green tree... What will they do in the drive? Mm -hmm. So he was the only real life mm -hmm. here in his walk yeah. Yeah. here as son as the son of man. Mm -hmm. um, and he, that life that he has and he is, he gave to us after he took what we had to the cross. Again, Paul emphasizes. The cross is the power of God unto salvation. And he says in another place that um, that it's just the cross is the power of God, 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. 
So what's that saying to us? That means the end of us as we knew ourselves. But we kind of want to cling on to that. We, you know, we still like to make a name for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what man does. You know, the ego always doesn't want to die. Yeah. Well, there's a reason he said that, you know, the cross, and we're beginning to, to see this more clearly, the cross, the wisdom of God and the power of God. Right. And it really had to do to me with what Jesus was believing while on the cross. And he was, even though he was, and, and, and I, I saw this, if you, wanna, if you want the true definition, a true definition of success and prosperity, there it it's was. Jesus naked, nailed to a cross, with all, uh, you know, everything in the world against him, but at the same time, he's trusting his Father for life. Yeah. That's the definition of success. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that, so he had that faith for life, even in the midst of death and everything that looked in opposition. And what's cool is we have the same faith. We live by the faith yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Okay, Christ. that same we've been given God. that same faith, the, the measure of the faith of Christ. Yeah. To persuade our heart to see and believe the same thing, if we will allow our heart to be persuaded. Yeah. Because yeah. we are being persuaded all the time. You know, the world is always persuading us to say, no, this is the good life, <laughs> or that's the good life, you know? And again, and we talked about this in Zoom, he says, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having things, okay? We all have things, we have nice things, okay? And, uh, but we've been given these things to enjoy, Okay, but we can't really enjoy the things if we think our life is in the things. Yeah. You know, yeah, when we understand right. where our life truly is, that right. it's not in the abundance of things we possess, but our life is in God, yeah. in Christ, then it, it frees us to really actually enjoy things. Enjoy the things. You know? Well, I like what you said, frees us, because really that's where the freedom comes from, is when the old man dies. Yeah. As long as the old man's alive, and he has all of those things upon him that are causing his bondage and, and uh, uh, slavery and desires. Fear. Fear and anxieties. Yeah. And maintaining and, and, and all those, until that's gone, you don't know what true life is. Really. It's a rest, right? The true life is really a rest. If Paul said to labor anything, it's like, you said, you said earlier, it's a labor to enter into that rest. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. Hebrew right. says, uh, right. whatever the right word is. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the, this is the rest to me in, in John six fifty seven. This is our Lord's words. Mm -hmm. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Yeah. Now, he wasn't physically eating of the Father, was he? Because no. this is where he talks about eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Well, he wasn't yeah. eating the Father's flesh and drinking his blood. But it's a type of living by, what you're living by. Well, he was, empowered. You find he was empowered by the Father. Yeah, he lived by the Father. And says, isn't he telling us that if you really want to rest in life, you, you live by eating of him as your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> grace, grace is one definition. Is grace is the strength of God. So when grace mm -hmm. comes upon us, we're strengthened. Yeah. And or in, into life or into what you're just talking about. Yeah, I believe that, that, that's strengthening. Divine us. enablement. And enablement. And it really enables and strengthens you to believe. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. To exactly. believe what God believes, what God already knows to be true. Yeah. Because God, God don't have the problem. You know, he, he understands where the life is, you know, but it's this yeah. carnal mind that was born out of death through the, through the fall. Now, the old man is dead and gone, you know, but our mind is still being renewed mm -hmm. to the truth of what has already been accomplished for yeah, us. Yeah, and what has been accomplished, I think we get in teaching the nominal church, 
get so far from the understanding of being birthed into something, being born into something, and in our case, being born from above, born of God. That means you're born into the family. That's God's house, you know. Jacob's house was his family. The house of Jacob, the house of David was his family. Mm -hmm. We are, Jesus Christ is the name in which the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We're born into the household family of God. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because you think about that, that birth or being born, and, and what born Jesus and Mary was the Holy Spirit impregnating Mary, right? In the yeah. same way with us. That's what the Holy Spirit are. births these things in us. Yeah. Right? So we're born of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now it's a life. See, it's not any longer works. Right. The religion wants to pick it back, the works back up <laughs> and start making that it. It's, that's not it. Right, right. Um, you know, and to me, that's the reason I personally believe that the nominal church, I call it, I mean, obviously there's a, there are those that are, I think, the real church uh, that are hearing today. Um, uh, but most of it, there, there's no power there in the church. And the power uh, comes through <clears throat> God, obviously, being our father and being in that family and being born after his image and all the things that it says we are. Not, not someday when we get to heaven. Uh, Jesus brought heaven and earth. He connected heaven and earth in himself. Mm. Yeah. And um, he as said, as, he, as, he long comes as, involved, as long as the church is involved with its, its works, if you want to put it that way, its efforts, then yeah. the Holy Spirit's going to let you be involved with your efforts. I believe in the assembly. I believe in assembly as the church. But I don't believe making the building the church and all the things that happen in it at some point become idolatry. Yeah. Well, that's what in Acts 17 he was saying, what kind of building are you going to make for the one who, who created all things? Right, yeah. <laughs> a, building, <laughs> yeah a building made without hands. That's right, what, building with that's what made Jesus with has done. Right. Because God doesn't dwell in those buildings made with yeah. water or what have you anymore. Well, he just dwells in a people. Dwells in us, the temple of the living God. Yeah, go figure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're talking about born of, of, the, born of the Spirit in that First Peter mm -hmm. one twenty two, it says, I always like to read, um, before that, too, make sure. Yeah, I do. What's the context, then? Yeah? When in doubt, read the scriptures. Well, we'll just go to tw us. Man, you, my problem is I keep going back further and further. It's Because it's all good. Yeah, it's all connected. <laughs> well, well, let's look at 17. See, I went way back. Way back. Well, you did. And if you call, uh, if you call on the Father, who without... Partiality judges according to each one's work. Okay, we'll look at that. Conduct yourselves through the time of your stay here. Am I? Yeah. Here. Knowing that you were not redeemed, verse 18, knowing this, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was for, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your soul, souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, Having been born again, this is New King James, 
been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That goes back to that Isaiah, right, that we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. So that the gospel, he says, the gospel is the power of God yeah. unto salvation to all those who believe it. Yeah. You know, to me, that's emphasizing about the blood that you know you're not redeemed by silver and gold, but you're right. redeemed by the very blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus. Mm -hmm. To me, that's really speaking of how much God loves you and wants to include you, and uh, that's what you know. A lot of people need to be convinced of. God's yeah. not against them, but. He's demonstrated just about, I don't know what else he could demonstrate that he loves people, wants to save them. Yeah. Well, that word, the, the tendency is to look at silver and gold as whoever has the silver and gold has the life. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, you're, you're, you've uh, purified your soul from, from that way of thinking, of yes. thinking where the life, that life is in the world or the things of the world or in silver and gold. And that doesn't um, mean you won't have any silver no, and gold. No, no, <laughs> but if you do, But it can't raise you from the dead. No, no amount of silver and gold death. can raise you from the dead, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, and then he talks about that incorruptible uh, seed that, that we we're talking about, that's, that is in you and nothing yeah. can actually steal that seed Nothing can destroy that seed. God wants us to know. It's in you are born of his seed. And that seed will continue to grow and swallow up every bit of death, including every bit of death in this mortal body. Right. You it's know? like we said the other night, though. That seed has to be put in the right environment to become fruitful. Mm -hmm. And I, this is the right environment. Yeah. But there's a lot of wrong environments and it's just not in other words the seed's there but it's like dormant yeah it's it, not yeah. really it's not growing if it's not watered with the water of the word and the light of revelation I mean, a lot of it is is what's in people it's like Christ becomes of no effect in them yeah. when they follow after a persuasion of that it's it's about what I do yeah. Again, for righteousness yeah. in life. Yeah. So you actually suppress, that word is actually being used right. to suppress that life that God wants to manifest in our life. Yeah, and, it's, and like the Lord said, the traditions of man make the word of God of none effect. Right. And we kind of drag the traditions over into Christ. And it's okay if there are things you, you don't throw everything out, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right? There are certain things that are foundational and fundamental, mm -hmm. but uh, and you build on what is the truth. Uh, I think Peter also said, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere, sincere milk of, the, of word. the word. That you may grow. That you may grow thereby. That's good. If yeah. you're not getting the sincere milk of the word, you're not going to grow. He also says, receive the implanted word that's able yeah. to save your soul. Yeah. And that's just when you were talking, we're talking about, because it's like to me, fingernails on a chalkboard. Every time I hear someone say, it doesn't matter what you believe. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter what you believe. God's going to have his way no matter what you believe. That to me is like fingernails on a chalkboard. That's going into the so sovereignty of God is sovereign and he's going to have his way no matter what you believe. Well, guess what? Yeah. yeah. What you believe doesn't matter <laughs> because your belief is, is called obedience to the faith, which is allowing your heart to be persuaded about the truth. And if that's the okay. faith. The faith. Obedience. To Jude, the faith, to Jude, the persuasion of God. Yeah, was it Jude that said that he was con contend for the faith that was once given mm -hmm. to the saints? There's a lot of, there's the Catholic faith, there's a Wesleyan faith, there's <laughs> all kinds of faiths. But yeah. the faith yeah. uh, is, there's only one. That's right. Right? 
That's right. And uh, there's only one that will lead to life. Exactly. You know? There's lots of faith if you see faith as it is a persuasion. You know, there's only one true persuasion of God that will lead you to life. You know. Yeah, uh, Paul said in Romans six that uh, know you not that the, to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey as servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart mm. that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Mm -hmm. So, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Yeah. So we were really the word slaves of sin. Now we are slaves to righteousness. Right. Of righteousness it is. But why? Because we obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. That's right. In other words, the faith. And again, that word obedience, people obedience have, heart, have yeah. a hard time with that because of, of our religious um, background, but it's just being tended, uh, being, what is it? It's listening with the heart to respond. Listening with the heart to respond. Mm -hmm. right. How did you get the heart to be obedient? <laughs> well, that's another thing I struggle <laughs> with. Uh, okay, let's go back to the heart we had. One that was deceitful above all things and desperately mm -hmm. wicked, and we can't know it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that hard. No, I I, <laughs> I, I throw that out because uh, the heart becomes obedient because it learns to listen to the Holy Spirit and be persuaded. Yeah. So God is preparing the heart for obedience, right? Mm -hmm. he, he is. is he, well, in other words, again, it's a gift. He, he's giving us an, an obedient heart by the persuasion of who He is. And, and the work of God. Well, he says don't harden your heart. Right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a reason he says that. Sure. Because we can harden our heart. Right. But, okay. Uh, we but to the Holy but, Spirit, there, we but, are but that doesn't mean he quits, pers he stops mm -hmm. persuading. I see God who, for who he is. He continues to massage our heart, well, see, to romance our heart. No matter how hard that heart is, he doesn't stop. He, no. to me, I see, you know, here's, just, here's, well, that's where it says in Romans, Romans 8, 28, that the Holy Spirit comes in our weakness to testify with our spirit that we are the sons of God. So that heart, even though there's weakness and there's <laughs> resistance and hard, and there can be hardening at times, but the Holy Spirit comes in and, and purges and softens that and, and persuades that heart mm -hmm. to be receptive. Yeah. Here's what the Lord said, John 6, 44. No man comes to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I'll raise him up the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. So he's quoting Isaiah 54, 13, where he also says they will all be taught of God. Mm -hmm. And when Paul said that... Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. God, who uh, caused the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give us the light of mm -hmm. the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. God does this. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. so when Peter, like, and just following up on what the Lord says, that it is written in the prophets that, every, that they will be all taught of God, when Peter uh, is asked, who do, the, who do you say I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, blessed art thou, listen, Simon Barjona, didn't call him Peter, his name he'd be given, but he said, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but who? My Father. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So, God's doing this. I mean, it's hard to put him out of it. <laughs> and then one, and then one sentence, the next sentence later, he says, "I'll never let this happen." Well, I know about the verse or two. <laughs> well, I love that because to me, it gives me encouragement because it's just like God continues to persuade our heart. Yeah. And sometimes we will respond, and then sometimes we may not respond, or we may respond in a different way. Yeah. 
right? According to our emotions or, or whatever, but God continues to per- persuade the heart to to bring his light to the heart. Even even the disciples, when he was talking about uh, in the in his, I call it the Lord's Prayer, where he's praying. You know, John uh, seventeen. Yeah. yeah, he he makes us some statements about they have they have believed, they have believed your word or or something right. like that. Even yeah. though they all abandoned him, he yeah. still saw their heart and yeah. what their heart, how their heart was responding to the word, and he knew the the end of that. You know. Right. Yeah. With Even with Peter, he says, you're going to deny me before the cock grows. He did. But when you're Just restored. Prior to that. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Uh, but he said, I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, but, you know, these guys, the, the disciples, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, when they, they were called and following him and until Jesus comes back. In the res- after the resurrection and says receive ye the Holy Spirit right. and breathe on it. That's right. Okay. And then that may have occurred. We know that Pentecost they were endued with power uh, to go out and do the things they did whether you know, there's a lot of controversy about which is mm-hmm. which here but but uh, you know we kind of sometimes see what Peter did and certain of the others and what they said and say, we, we talk about them like, well, gosh, I would have never done that. Well, you don't know what you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do it now. <laughs> I've done it. And I have the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. Right. Okay, I know what I've done, you so, know? And uh, so it's like, but but I see too, even all through before the, the all through scripture, you see the faith actively working, Hebrews 11. The faith was act. The faith of God was actively working, and people were responding to that faith, yeah. you know, yeah. and and seeing things beyond uh, the natural. Right. So yeah. these are men that didn't have the Holy Spirit, but the faith was actively working. Well, you know, you know Peter, through throughout Peter, the Scripture, Peter says something I always thought was interesting, where he said that. Um, about the gospel and about the things that they were hearing. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, talking about us receiving the end of our faith, even the salvation of our souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, mm-hmm. searching what or what manner of, the, of time the Spirit of Christ listened which was in them did signify mm. when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Mm. He said it was in them. What scripture is that? I like that. That's First uh, Peter uh, one eleven. Because it says the Spirit of Christ. It does. You know, and so we have like, this, we had this discussion too. I mean, we're kind of going different places. It's yeah. kind of neat, but about about Noah and how he how Christ preached the spirit of Christ was preaching through Noah yeah, to those yeah, people yeah. as he was building the ark you know that's that verse where you know we look at it where he went into the end down to hell to preach to those you know that perished in the flood but there's there's another way to look at that too that he was I mean the gospel was being preached you know yeah. I mean the gospel was being preached um you know, even to those folks. Get on the then. boat. Get, get in the boat. <laughs> it was basically get, get in the boat. <laughs> yeah. And you'll be sealed. Right. Yeah. It's really the same kind of message today. Well, it's you know, like when the Lord sent the 12 out to raise the dead and to heal the sick, and he anointed them to do that. I mean, mm. they couldn't do that until he anointed them to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, is that the same thing with Noah? Is that the same thing with Isaiah? Or, I don't know. Right. A lot of things we don't know. Well, it, there's there's a lot of things about the gift, gifts and callings and as as the Holy Spirit wills, you know. And mm-hmm. it doesn't say all the members of the church were out, you know. It doesn't say that they were all out healing 
people yeah. and casting out devils and all that. It says by the hands of the apostles, these things took place. Now we know they took place by the hands of Stephen, you know, who was really uh, appointed to, to wait on tables, which, yeah. which is kind of an amazing thing. He was first, he was just serving tables. And in that serving, just being obedient in that place uh, to where he felt like, you know, the God, God had appointed and called him, then the power of God just began to it's naturally flow preaching. through his life in that, you know. Well, David was out in the field serving the yeah. sheep. <laughs> serving the sheep. Yeah. What are you going to do with that little guy, you know? Yeah, but you know what? That's what the Lord uses. He... You see that all through Scripture. He uses the most unlikely. Yeah. Uh, based on what we would think, right? Mm hmm uh, and That to me is, uh, and not only that, but you notice all the women that were really used to God were all barren. So it couldn't be them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of what he does. I mean, with Gideon, uh, it'd be... Uh, Calls him a mighty man of valor. God calls things that are not as though they are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he took 300 and did what he, what he did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Lord cut it down from what, 32,000 to 300? Yeah. So that Israel didn't think they delivered themselves. Right. And That's so we is. don't think so. <laughs> he, right. You see, the cross is what's to keep us from thinking it's us. Well, and they say, too, one of the main reasons he chose Israel was because of the, not because they were such a strong, powerful people, yeah, yeah. but because they were looked as, as weak, weak, a weak people in the earth. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and, but there's something about that, yes. that carnal mind that makes it want, want to make it about you, you know, mm -hmm. and what you've done. And that's why God continued to say, when all these things take place, don't forget the hand that it, that delivered you. Mm -hmm. You were delivered from the right hand, right. not the left. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> from the strong arm of the Lord, you know. And Isaiah says, um, about the end, in the end, uh, he says, the lofty looks of man shall be humble in the Haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Mm -hmm. Mm. We're still working toward that day. <laughs> He's really exalted now, but we haven't got the message yet. But when we all finally fall on our face and say, it's all you, Lord. Look what the <laughs> Lord has done. Yes, yes. But yeah. well, again, I think that's why it points to the cross. Yeah. Because it's only through the cross that there's any any hope for mankind. Yeah, and it's, again, I say, not just coming to the cross like the Catholic Church does and hang around your neck and be still on it. And it's going through it to this newness of life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, being renewed in the spirit of the mind. Everything happens on the other side of the cross. Well, I was looking at Galatians 1 earlier and that whole thing about how that they were being moved away from the gospel of grace to another gospel, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and how Paul says, he says at one point in there, he says, this gospel that I preach, I didn't receive it from man, yeah. but I receive it by revelation right. of Jesus Christ. Right? Yeah. And so what the Lord, I felt like, drew my attention to was that was at the road to Damascus. That's when he received the gospel. Yeah. When he's by the revelation of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the gospel. Yeah. Alive. <laughs> he was, I mean, he knew that he, would, he was crucified, you know, and they thought he, they had done away with this troublemaker. Yeah. And now he's standing before him uh, as a glorified man, you know, so and uh, yeah. it just like messed his entire theology up. <laughs> it's just... And Saul wasn't going to Damascus to get saved. 
<laughs> no, he was there to, he was actually, it talks about how he was there to, with every intent and everything within him, he made it his his life's aim, aim in life to rid the world of, of this yeah. thing called the way. That way. The Christian way, you know. You know, I think that's <laughs> interesting being called the way because what the, uh, the, two, the cherubim and the flaming sword were placed before the Garden of Eden. To, oh. Listen, to keep the way mm. of the tree of life. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not necessarily, it didn't say to keep you out, All right. but to keep the way of it. Mm. Mm. The way of life is what's the seen in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's the cross. Mm -hmm. Because the other tree takes you the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I call it the way of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You got one way or you got the other. Right. And to me, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a type of the law. It's a law can never, you can never be saved by the law. You mm -hmm. won't come to know God by the law either. But uh, we come to know uh, God through Christ, through right. the life that we get in Christ. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus is our tree Jesus. of life. Well, Jesus yeah. is the tree, of, the tree life. of life. He's a lot of type. I mean, he's the Sabbath. He's our Sabbath. He's our rest. All the Sabbaths that went before. He fulfilled them. And he fulfilled the law. You know, people say he kept the law fully. Well, he really didn't. He would stone the woman taken in adultery if you were going to None keep the law. None of them did. None of them did. <laughs> right? So, but he fulfilled the law. How do you fulfill it? Love fulfills the law. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he loved not his life to the death. And, and, and revealed the love of God for creation. And, uh, that's the real gospel to people. Instead of one of fear, you know, if you don't do this, if you don't do that. Uh, and, uh, well, the gospel, when you really understand it, is, it's, it really is good news. <laughs> Exactly. When you understand it, you know, and it's not about rules or what you do, it's about what's already been done. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, it is finished, and the veil was torn from the top right. to the bottom. Right. Uh, so the way of, the, of life is made open for everyone who will come freely and eat from the tree of life. Yeah. Everyone is invited. The invitation is open to everyone, you know. Yeah. And so... Um, you know the way into that holiest of all that you know if you study the tabernacle any, in the wilderness uh, the holiest of all was 10 by 10 by 10 it was like a cube hmm. that's 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand uh, in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die Nobody lived to be a thousand. You notice that? 939, 969. But not a thousand. So a thousand really speaks of eternal life. It's a type of that. Mm. The way was made into life mm -hmm. in Christ. Yeah. Uh, and we, I don't know, we've done a lot of things. You know, I know if I die, I go be with the Lord, whatever that is, uh, whatever that <laughs> means. And it's certainly better than... Anything. In his care, oh. for sure. <laughs> but but Paul, Paul said it all when he, he said, um, but it's more needful. He wanted to go to, to be with the yeah. Lord. He said, I'm in, I'm in a straight twitch too, or a, a go be with the Lord. Well, that's much better, but it's more needful for me to be here with you. And teach and what have you. So that yeah. should tell us that if if we're not here for others, we're here for the wrong reason anyway. Mm -hmm. If we're here to gather onto ourselves, mm -hmm. um, stature in whatever way. But that can sound condemning. 
to people. Yeah, I suppose it would. Yeah. But I mean, in the sense, <laughs> I mean, in the sense of uh, somehow um, it's glorifying me, certainly in a way, or or even my affections being set here mm -hmm. on all these things. We're supposed to be setting our affections on things above because we're dead and our life is here with Christ mm -hmm. and God. Right. Well, it says we're free to love and serve. That's yeah. what it says. Yeah. We're free to love and serve. So it's really freedom is that. It's, it's because we lack nothing for life. Okay? So if we truly lack nothing for life... Okay, so we carry the, the heart of God, but that again is a persuasion of the heart, you know, and a renewing of the mind from that old man mm -hmm. that has been busy living life for himself and trying to, to, to yeah. um, you know, trying to serve himself yeah. with life. Yeah, we have. Uh, or preserve his own life. Or you, I guess you could say we have a love for the truth that produces life. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's a truth of God that produces life. And we've been blessed with knowing what that is. But I don't get into the just let you, I don't get into the, oh, I wish I loved people more. I wish I could serve no. people more. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, and, and I don't think God is, is saying that, you know, why aren't you loving people more? Why aren't you serving mm -hmm. people more? Where I'm at is, um, my heart is fully persuaded to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that's transform, trans, doing the transformation, mm -hmm. right? From glory to glory. As I simply behold him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and uh, the more I behold him, the more of that glory of his, of, of, of who he is is going to manifest through my life. The fruit of who he is, which is the fruit of love. You know, which brings us back to it's God's heart mm -hmm. to love and to serve. Yeah. You know, to love and to serve. It's so we life, become an expression yeah. of that. It's life that's otherly, because God is otherly. God is a flow. He's a, he's a source. He's the river that flows out of Eden, if you will. He's, you know, and, and, and it has to flow out of us to others, knowing that it's limitless. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, a, I, and I'm not saying we've got to somehow do this, but no, we've we bear got to the understand fruit of that. that that's where we come to. Right. He has to bring us there. But, but um, I don't remember exactly how you said it, about, uh, but about if you're here for the wrong reason, it's like, if I do nothing but receive his love and love him back, I'm here for the right reason. Yeah. yeah. The other stuff will come. I don't worry yeah. about sure. it. Right. Well, that's what I'm it. saying, too. Yeah. yeah. See, that was what okay Paul, be, that's what Paul expressed that's what Paul expressed to the church because of the fruit he was bearing. He wasn't trying to make that law for everyone. You know what I'm saying? As far, but it was an expression of, of really of, of his heart, you know, that had been persuaded, you know. And it's just like, and that persuasion, number one, uh, caused him to be delivered from the fear of all death. Okay? Because he says, hey, I'd rather be you know, yeah, I mean, he had no fear of death. No. You know, I was kind of laughing because I thought, here's Paul shipwrecked and beaten. Yeah, yeah, and right. I mean, doing, going through all this. And he says, uh, you know, it's probably better for me to just go on if you would. <laughs> I would probably say that. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting beat on. I'm tired of getting rocks thrown at me. Yeah. <laughs> And he's probably saying it while he's sitting in prison somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should I come or should I go now? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing how he could, how he knew that even if he's in prison, that nothing could hinder the word, or nothing could hinder what God was doing through him. Through him. Even if you live in Loras. Yeah. Way out in Loris, yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. If your heart is persuaded, you know, towards, if the Lord, you know, then it's just like nothing is going to hinder mm -hmm. 
you know, you're going to bear the fruit of his life, I guess is what I'm saying. And everywhere yeah. you go, because you got to come into town sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you seems like you're living off the grid. <laughs> you got to come to Costco once in a while. Yeah. God knows how to find you even you off the grid. Up. You're never off the grid with God. <laughs> You don't have no grid. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah, that that just they're just it's key things, you know, along this past year that has really been awesome nuggets. And one of those is that Hebrews two, fourteen, fifteen that says basically the root of all bondage is the fear of death. To yeah. me, I'm a simple man. I'm like, you know, Forrest Gump. You know, yeah. I'm a very simple man. simple man. But I like things gonna... that, you know, when, when I hear things that I can grab a hold of in a simple way and say, well, if the root of all fear, uh, root of all bondage is the fear of death, yeah. then the antidote is the promise of life. Mm-hmm. That yeah. you will not, you, you have not been sentenced to death, but you've been sentenced to life in Christ. And perfect love, knowing the love that God cast has for you, yes, cast out fear, yeah. all fear. All fear of what? All you, fear of death. All fear of punishment. You know? You fears has not made per- been made perfect in love. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it starts from there. If we don't know how much we're loved of God, yeah. there will be a lot of help to anybody else, really. All right. You know? And how many messages really preach a, a, a message that God doesn't love you. God is upset with you most of the time. Disappointed. At least he's disappointed with you. Because, you know, God's your employer. And you're the employee. And if you don't get busy and get to work and do a certain amount of things on whatever, then you're a disappointment in the eyes of God. That's the message. And it just, man, that just, it just, you know, stirring in me so much that, it just religion again mm-hmm. that religious which is just a belief system you know religion is a what you're believing uh yeah. is is such uh, there's such a corrupt belief system in that you know that is really doing more to suppress you know yeah with the you know in John, the Hebrews two fourteen what you mentioned for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death destroy him. that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage you know anytime Paul mentions bondage it's law. Mm. I mean, that, you see that all the time. So what is the power of death? Law. Obviously, when we're trying by law to establish our own righteousness and live forever, that's sin, and that's the power of death. You don't realize it's that you're serious. Refusing, you're refusing the power of God. Yeah. You're refusing, it's the opposite. The power of God for life is what we have need. Uh, and to believe that when the Lord said it is finished, something was actually finished. Okay? When, when the writer of Hebrews said, there are those who needed yet to enter into that rest. Right. He's talking about, obviously, uh, the promised land that Israel didn't enter into, but you know, that's a type of the life of Christ, as far as I'm concerned. I know we'll make it heaven, right. but it's the life of Christ. Mm-hmm. But he's saying it's still available. Yeah, it's still, yeah, it says that, that um, in fact, for... Uh, for in a certain place on the seventh day this on this wise uh, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works and in this place again if they shall enter into my rest 
Seeing therefore the remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limited it to a certain day, saying in David, Today is after so long a time, as it is said, today, big letters, mm -hmm. if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Right. For if Jesus, or really that's Joshua, had given them, meaning Israel, rest, then what he had afterwards spoken of another day, there remains then therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, yeah. mm -hmm. as God did from his. Right. And, and he's speaking of God having ceased from his works the seventh day of creation. Right. That particular day tells us where we are today yeah. in Christ. Yeah, and he's showing that, uh, you know, that goes, I think, partly to uh, a lot of the Sabbath keepers, that if Joshua uh, was speaking of a rest, uh, a future rest, uh, in other words, the Jews were keeping the seventh day Sabbath, and that right. was the holy day. That was the law. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, Hebrews there is talking about there's a future rest, and that first rest was just a type, a type. of a rest. Yeah. And don't just hold there all your eggs on that one day, <laughs> right. <laughs> because yeah. there's more yeah. than, than that. And Jesus fulfills that day. He's our Sabbath. Come mm -hmm. unto me, all your labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, the Jews uh, really felt that by keeping the Sabbath day, that was an identifying sign they were God's people. Because they kept the Sabbath day holy. And circumcision. <laughs> yeah. Holy. Yeah, that, right. And that's. They turned the law, which was really the law, it says the law was spiritual, mm -hmm. but we were carnal. That's right. Sold under sin. Yep. Yeah. So we, their view of the law was carnal. they were a, a carnal, uh, they looked at the law as. This is the way to life, that I keep this law. That's right. I keep these laws. So and that's how I'll gain life. And that's yeah. why Jesus says to the Pharisees, he says, you search the scripture because you think by searching them, you have eternal yeah. life. But the scripture pointed to me, Speaking speaks to me. me, points to me. The law pointed to Christ. The law always pointed to Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he says, you won't come to me for life. He says, I'm standing in front of you right now. Here I am. Yeah, I'm the right. one the law pointed to, yeah. you know, and now he won't come to me for life. He won't come. Yeah. They keep looking to the law for life. And that goes back to when you, I think, were reading Isaiah 40 about comfort. Yeah. And the end, of, the end of your warfare. It's over. Your yeah, warfare it's over. Is over. Mm -hmm. Your rest has come. Hello. <laughs> it goes Hello, back to that I'm fighting. Sure. That goes back to that fighting. Exactly. Fighting, exactly. the fighting thing, it yeah. reminds me of the Japanese fight. guy that was out on an island somewhere, you know, after World War II ended. Mm -hmm. And he was out there so for fight. like 30 Still years, thick and war was out, right? <laughs> you know, defending his position on yeah. this island because he never got the news the war was on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. But you know, Christians are still fighting. They're still doing it. A warfare. They're still fighting a, a, a devil that's already been defeated. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the victory is just resting, resting in, yeah, resting in Christ, resting yeah. in the victory. He says, "In this world, you'll have tribulation, but be in good cheer." You know, I have overcome the world. And that goes so. back to where you, where you, I think you we're starting with a re resolution. Resting in who we are in the new man, and I really like the word revolution even more. <laughs> I mean, I just told Greg, I said I like gospel revolution. revolution. I like, it. but when you look up, it, it's really about you know uh, a government, an evil government being overthrown, and a new government yeah. being established. Yeah. 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 And it says, Jesus says, a body you prepared for me. Speaking of the cross, to take away the old order and to establish a new order. That's what he was talking yeah. about. To take away death and to establish the kingdom of life. You know, that's, I mean, it's always been. But we were in union with death. We were in union with the old man yeah. of sin and death, you know. Yeah. 
But a lot of, I, I'm seeing a lot of people have, even still in, in grace today, still don't see the law for what the law was. The law of Moses. The law, why the law was given. And Paul, you see it, Paul, under, he was under the law, but he understood why the law was given. You know, yeah. And he, he saw how the law was used in a way, again, by people thinking it would bring them life when only it really just brought them death because of the way they were looking at it. It revealed to sin working death in them. Right. right. Like right. Paul would say, uh, the law is good. The law is holy. The For why the law is given. But I found that which was good to be death unto me. Right, right. <laughs> when I try to use it to become righteous, it's yeah. killing me. It's killing me. Because yeah. it's sin to do that. The law isn't bad. It's just that what? I'm carnal. Right. It's sold on to sin. Right. As a slave. The law exposed. I like how that one picture, the law was like an x-ray machine yeah. that revealed, you could say, the cancer. It's, but it had no ability to cut the cancer out. No. To, to, yeah. to you know, take it away yeah. from you. I heard Jay Vernon McGee say once, this was a great analogy to me. Um, the law is like a mirror. Mm -hmm. It shows you you need to shave, but you don't shave with the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be rough. Right? That'd be rough shaving. Christ is the razor. Uh, so, you know, that's... That's why he takes it back, if you look at it, that's why he takes it back with circumcision, that you've been circumcised by the heart. Spirit. You know, there's yeah. there are spiritual circumcision right. that took place at the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, death was put to death. You know, sin and death were put to death right. in the body of Jesus, and the veil was torn. You know, yeah. so that we could be married, joined to Him, who was raised from the dead, that we might bear fruit. That's Romans seven two. Yeah, that we might bear fruit unto the Lord. Matter of fact, Paul said in Galatians that uh, I to the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Yeah. yeah. In other words, I can't live unto God that way. Right. Well, yeah. But every Sunday they bring out they, the law. Yeah. And they well, say, Are you keep you know I, I see the, the the one actually the one that wrote the book, Are You a Fan or a Follower? Yeah. Yeah. He's the video I saw where he's, I mean, he's, these people are sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. Yep. And they're going to his, his daughter that she's like six years old and, and saying, are you, are you trying your best to keep the Ten Commandments? And I thought, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you are scared you to that child. <laughs> I mean, isn't that terrible? I mean, she's going to wind up so rebellious probably. Probably. <laughs> And that's where a lot of rebellion comes. You know, exactly. a lot of people that rebel against the church, and you think, what happened to them? Well, the religion happened to them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They couldn't yeah. They were saying, this is God, and they tried to live up to it. And they couldn't. And they can't do it. Yeah. Right. You, know? you know, Paul could preach this in any church, modern day church today. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, he's speaking to Peter here, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? See, he's speaking of himself as one with Christ, mm -hmm. as a witness of Christ, are we, are we ourselves also found sinners? Is therefore a Christ a minister of sin? Question mark. God forbid. Listen, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, <laughs> I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Yeah. So when I think it's Colossians, Paul warns against making laws and ordinances and you say, touch not, taste not, do this, that, you know. And he's coming against that kind of thing, but that's kind of what we do. We set up these, especially you look at the Catholic Church, 
And I'm not saying there aren't some saved people in the Catholic Church. Right. There is. But they're very, you know, if, you, if you're taking the Eucharist, have you uh, gone to confession? Have you, do you attend Mass every week? Do you, it's, I kind of like uh, maybe mm. Catholic Church like Iran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Iranian people aren't bad people. Right. Yeah. Right. They got a crummy government. Well, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But listen. That's interesting. The Catholic analogy. people are bad people. The Lord always yeah. went after the leaders. Like the, like you say, it's not the people, it's the leaders of the people. Just like if he took issue with anybody, it was the scribes and the Pharisees and those who were blind leaders of the blind. Right? Mm -hmm. The sinners, uh, uh, he didn't seem to have a lot of trouble with, but yeah. they would classify them as sinners, right? He ate and drank with publicans and sinners. Friends of sinners. Yeah. Well, this has been good. Yeah. Why don't you guys move down here? Well, I'd love to. Man, I love to move down here. But I love your passion for the Word. Oh, the Lord is so good. I mean, it's just <laughs> we met in Branson, Missouri. Oh, okay. That's yeah, where we met. We Briefly, the at the elevator, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, I remember vividly. <laughs> yeah. That was our first... But I've watched, uh, you know, the videos for a long time. Bertie, Brett, and um, Greg, and you, and Phelan. I love Phelan. He's just, just such a...